A resource-based economy, or short an RBE, is a new social economical model that is very different from the monetary system we know today. In our RBE, there is no money, country, government, police, military, companies, or ownership of any kind. In our RBE, the goal is to provide for the highest possible standard of living for everyone on Earth, while preserving the habitat. The current monetary system's goal is to maintain consumption, to secure the movement of money. It is basically an incentive system and a distribution architecture. In a RBE, all goods and services are abundantly available for everyone for free. In a RBE, ownership is replaced with access. We can think of an RBE as a big public library of goods and services. Now, let's imagine for a moment that you live in an RBE. And let's imagine that you meet with your friend and you spontaneously decide to play tennis together. The weather is good, so you decide to lend some bike from the nearest bike station. You bike to the tennis court facility where you return the bikes to another bike station. Tennis rackets and balls are freely available at the tennis court facility. You have a lot of fun with your friend. And when you stop playing, you return the rackets and the balls back to the facility. Now you and your friend decide that you are both hungry. And you take the metro to another part of the city where you eat high quality food at a fully automatic restaurant for free. But how can everything be free? How is that even possible though? The concept of money and exchange have been brainwashed into people's minds since childhood. That's why it can be very difficult for most to understand that a world without money is possible. Money is primarily used today as an incentive for people to do work, even if they don't feel like it. If production and distribution was automized and human labor was replaced with machines, then there would be no need to push people to do unwanted tasks. Therefore, no need for money. In our RBE, all repetitive tasking jobs are replaced with automation. The relatively few necessary remaining jobs will be gladly occupied by volunteers. It is highly likely that these jobs will be in scarcity because it is our nature that we like to help. It will feel like a privilege to do work that feels meaningful and that contributes directly to everyone, including the habitat. People from the US and UK contribute in 2012 three hours on average a week for volunteer work, despite that they had to maintain their normal job. So the argument that nobody would work if they didn't have to is a myth. An RBE has many similarities to communism, but it's not the same. Communism was primarily based on a moral idea, while in our RBE, we primarily use science and logic to guide our decisions. In the time of communism, there was scarcity. In our RBE, we create abundance with the help of technology that was not available in the time of communism. History shows that communism was never implemented ideally according to its ideology. In fact, communism looked more like socialism because of the use of money. In our RBE, there is no money, and government is replaced with an open-source, decentralized, collaborative computer system. In true communism, there is no money, and the strongest criticism of communism is that it removes the incentive for people to work harder than they absolutely have to. It also leads to resentment of those who work less but receive the same. This is not a problem in the RBE. Tasking and repetitive jobs are done by machines, and the rest of jobs are done by volunteers. The incentive to do a job is because it's meaningful and because it has a direct positive impact on everyone, including the one doing the job. In RBE, we replace ownership with access. Access-based instead of property-based help us to minimize the amount of resources we use. For instance, everyone owning their own car that is used in average 5% of the time and parked 95% of the time and occupy parking space is not really efficient. But this is the reality today. Instead, it would be better to share all cars. Because less cars are needed, we save materials and energy on production. Materials and energy that could be used in other places to enhance the living standards of everyone. Almost all criminal acts and human suffering today can be linked to poverty and inequality. 
In fact, crime and poverty is a structural problem due to the current monetary system and is referred as structural violence. It is estimated that structural violence kills more than 20 million people each year. This could easily be avoided. For instance, there is more than enough food for everyone, but the structure inhibits some people from buying food because they don't have enough money. In an RBE, there is no poverty, and all basic human needs like clean water, food, shelter, clothing are provided for everyone. In an RBE, material equality is achieved by providing everyone with the same standard of living. If a product cannot be abundantly available to everyone through access, for instance, if there's not enough materials, the product cannot be produced because this would result in inequality. It is estimated that everyone in the RBE will have a much better living standard than today. In fact, everyone's living standard will be equal to a millionaire today. This is due to the focus shift from money cost efficient to resource cost efficient. The standard of living in the RBE will depend entirely on how intelligently and efficiently we use and reuse our resources. Our current monetary system is not designed for sustainability. In fact, sustainability is not really part of the monetary system at all, because the monetary system was invented before the industrial age. Back then, pollution was not a problem, and it was almost unthinkable that we could become so efficient in harvesting resources. In the RBE, we recognize that Earth's resources are finite, and that some materials are more abundant than others. In the RBE, an ongoing resource accounting ensures that we know what we have in the current moment, both locally and globally. Abundant materials are preferred and used first, Constant resource accounting enables us to be flexible so we can adjust production to use another type of material if the one we are using becomes scarce. Materials free due to recycling are as well accounted for in the system. Plus every time, for instance, we cut down a tree because we need wood, we need to plant a new tree to preserve the habitat. This is called dynamic equilibrium. It sounds logical, but we don't follow this logic today in our current monetary system. The decision due to where products should be produced today comes down to where it's most money cost efficient. For instance, food today in the US travels an average 2,400 kilometers or 1,500 miles. In the RBE, production happens locally to reduce energy cost and pollution due to transportation. In a RBE, fruits and vegetables will most likely be grown in vertical farms. Vertical farms take up much less space. Fruits and vegetables can be grown without the use of soil, pesticides, and use only 5% of the water used in traditional farms. Sustainability is a central part of an RBE. That's why when designing a new product, it goes through a range of efficiency and sustainability protocols. Maximizing durability means to make the product durable so it doesn't break down so fast like most products today. This results in less repair and production that leads to less recycling and energy loss. Today there's no incentive to make products last long because the goal of the monetary system is to maintain consumption and the company's goal is to make money. The company earns much more money if the product needs to be replaced with a new one. A simple example of maximized adaptivity is phone blocks. Imagine a mobile phone made out of small modules that can be put together like Lego. The screen, camera, processor, battery and much more are all separate modules. If the screen breaks down, it's easy to replace it with a new one without difficult repair or even more commonly today, replacing the whole phone. If a better camera gets invented, we can just replace the old camera with a new one without replacing the whole phone. An easy way to understand standardization is to look at mobile chargers that we use today. Today we use different chargers depending on mobile brand. It would be more production cost efficient if we only had one charger that would fit all devices. Because producing the same unit many times is easier to optimize than producing several different types of units that need different processes of production. It is a requirement in our RBE when designing a new product, easy to recycle materials are used. In our monetary system today, there is no incentive for this. 
The cheapest materials are used to ensure money cost efficiency, regardless if they are environmentally friendly or not. Plus today it's much cheaper not to recycle, so many companies have no choice if they want to survive in a competitive market. It is energy cost efficient to make machines do all the repetitive hard work. That's why optimization is a central part of an RBE. In an RBE, effort is made to adapt products so they easily can be produced by machines. Many professions and jobs today exist due to the monetary system. For instance, accounting, salesmen, marketing, banking, brokers, lawyers, and so on. These are some of the jobs that are no longer needed in an RBE. This means that there will be very little work left for humans. Those who work in an RBE will volunteer and contribute directly to the welfare of everyone by doing research, science, design, improving goods, services, and sustainability. Today, automation results in unemployment. In our RBE, automation frees people to have more time doing art, music, entertainment, spending more time with their friends and families. All mentioned sustainability protocols, maximizing durability, adaptivity, standardization, recycling, automation, plus resource accounting and management, will be an integrated part of an open source collaborative design system. All of this is to ensure when a product is being produced, it has the lowest impact on the habitat. You can access the system from anywhere, even from your home. It has a user interface that can be best compared with the CAD software we know today. The software gives the designer all the tools needed to design a new item. The designer can visually see the item, assemble it, change the colors, materials, measurements, turn it around, play around with it. All measurements and details on how to produce the item is embedded in the design. Furthermore, the software allows the designer to test the item in a simulation before production. This prevents something from being produced that doesn't work as expected. Everyone that wants to can be a designer in theory. You don't need education necessarily, but experience. Because the software ensures that only the products that live up to the sustainability protocols will be accepted, the sustainability protocols that were mentioned earlier. In fact, the system gives suggestions to the designer on how to improve the design while the design is being formed. Let's imagine again for a moment that you live in an RBE and that you want to change the sofa you have at home. You access the earlier mentioned collaborative design system where all the designs are freely available that were created by other product designers. All available designs meet, of course, all sustainability protocols that we mentioned earlier. You browse among thousands of sofa designs in a big online catalog that is best compared with Amazon today, but much more advanced. You can, for instance, rotate any product and see very detailed parameters about the product. For instance, material used and the delivery time. You find the sofa you like and it is estimated that it will be delivered in 5 hours and 23 minutes. You push the order button and immediately the nearest optimized production facility gets informed that can handle this type of order. The production facility is only 20 kilometers away. The production of your new sofa starts instantly. And then when the sofa is finished, it gets loaded on a vehicle that transports the sofa directly to your home. Your old sofa gets replaced and loaded on the transport vehicle and transported to the recycling facility that is near to the production facility. The transporter returns shortly to the production facility to transport more stuff. Materials from the old sofa can be recycled and then reused by the production facility later on to make new products. Imagine a world without commercials. In an RBE, there would be no companies and no commercials that would constantly try to manipulate with our basic needs. For instance, making us feel inferior and then promise that the product will solve our problems. No commercials will result in less jealousy, comparison with others, and this will result in less competition. People will feel overall more happy and less worried and stressed. Let's imagine walking around an RBE Existing city structure will be radically changed. Cities will become more people-friendly with a lot of trees and greens and areas between the buildings, with lanes for walking and biking, areas for sitting and relaxation. It is likely there will be no cars inside the city. More efficient, comfortable and quiet means of transportation will be used instead. People will be less stressed. There will be more time for fun, games, reading and introspection. 
we primarily look at two factors when we measure the performance of an RBE. Number one, how well or efficient are we preserving the habitat? Number two, public health. How well are the inhabitants doing physically, mentally, emotionally, maybe even spiritually? In our current monetary system, performance is measured by a gross domestic product, or in short, referred as GDP. It is seen as an improvement when GDP goes up. The higher the consumption, the higher the GDP. Inefficiency and problems result often in higher GDP. It is also important to understand that GDP does not indicate anything about public health or the quality of people's lives. In fact, when public health goes down, GDP often goes up because people spend more money on treatments and medicine. So why do we need to change our current monetary system? Well, data shows that Earth's life-supporting systems are rapidly declining. 50% of all wildlife has been destroyed in the past 40 years alone. Sustainability is not part of the current monetary system. In fact, the current monetary system is dependent on constant consumption. If we don't change the system, we will end up destroying the habitat, and this might lead to the destruction of our species. In spite of all the good intentions that politicians have trying to find the solutions for pollution by imposing regulations, it is wishful thinking that small changes inside the system will resolve the global pollution problem. There is no incentive in the current monetary system for sustainability. If we continue the same way, with the same approach, we will get the same result. Some argue that an RBE is an imaginary place, which everything is perfect, an utopia that will not work in real life. An RBE is not a finite system where everything is perfect. There is not such a thing as perfection. There is always room for improvement. But it can seem like this because an RBE is much better than the current monetary system we have today. It is important to understand that an RBE embraces change. And as our understanding of the world changes or improves, the RBE is adjusted. The monetary system is against change. In fact, it has self-preserving mechanisms that prevent any change from happening. In our RBE, we align with the laws of nature or the best understanding of the laws of nature at the current moment. It is not a question of choice. Nature is a dictatorship. Either we align or we perish. But what about human nature? Stop judging yourself and others. If you feel people are egoistical and self-centered, it is because they have been raised in a culture that promotes that behavior. Crime and violence is a structural problem, not a human nature problem. Instead, try to imagine a culture with less stress and where collaboration is promoted. But changing our current monetary system to an RBE is extremely hard because we are all victims of culture. An RBE is challenging for most people on how they understand the world. Furthermore, it is often seen as a threat because it imposes a radical change in people's values and beliefs. And most people have a powerful identity with the current monetary system. An RBE is an extreme threat on people's identity. For instance, people identify with their job. Let's say you're a lawyer. Being a lawyer is a high status profession and you get a lot of validation and respect from your family, friends and even strangers. You see being a lawyer as an achievement. You spend the last seven years educating yourself, going through school, so much struggle. Now you have been a lawyer for 10 years working hard. Now somebody comes along and tells you about an RBE. It is only natural that you feel some resistance to it. You feel threatened, uncertainty arises about your status and place in society. You feel like you have something to lose. Maybe all of this happens on an unconscious level. When people are strongly against an RBE, it is likely just a defense mechanism. If you want to know more about a resource-based economy, I invite you to check out the Venus Project or Peter Joseph. I will put a couple of links below. And if you have any questions regarding this video or about an RBE, a resource-based economy, then I invite you to leave a comment and I will try to answer it as good as I can. I hope you enjoyed this video and I thank you for listening so far.